Welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Game Programming, a problem-solving approach. Episode 1, Making Pick and Sticks. This is a tutorial on programming games with C++ and either Allegro Game Programming Library or SDL. In this tutorial, I expect you to know your basics of C++, pretty much up to classes, inheritance, and pointers, and it goes without saying all the things before those. The point of this tutorial is to teach you to use Allegro or SDL and give you a basic idea of a game's structure, but I'm not going to write out all the code for you. Part of being a programmer is having problem-solving skills, so this is something you have to develop. I kind of think of this tutorial as giving you all the puzzle pieces, but then you have to put the puzzle together yourself. So what are we making? We're making pick and sticks. What is pick and sticks? Well, this should sum it up for you. Looks pretty basic, right? Well, that's the point. It's sort of my hello world of game programming. First you start with a basic game, get the hang of movement and basic collision, and then you move on to more things like loading in maps and having enemies, but that's for another game and tutorial. Here are some things you'll want to keep in mind when deciding which you want to use. Of course, you could always try both for this first tutorial and decide which more you like that way. Allegro and SDL are both cross-platform, and both can be used when OpenGL when you get around to it. Allegro is easier than SDL, and that's the main thing it has to offer. It's great for getting games running relatively quickly. SDL requires more work to do certain things like drawing text to the screen, but SDL has more to offer, such as multi-threading, socket support, and is more widely used with OpenGL than Allegro is. So if you're completely new to this stuff, you might try Allegro. For pick and sticks, SDL takes a little more work, but they're both quite manageable. Well, I currently can't afford internet access. This means I can't go online and show you how to set up Allegro and SDL. Instead, I'll give you some links for downloads and other tutorials. First, you need an IDE. IDEs are integrated development environments. Most people will ask, can I do this or that in Dev C++ if it can be done in C++? Well, yes, C++ is C++. Dev C++, CodeBlocks, and Visual Studio are development environments, and you can install libraries in any of them. If you've never installed a library before, I would suggest Dev C++, as it will install the library for you. Otherwise, you might try CodeBlocks or Visual C++. If you want to use Visual C++, you can get a free version called Express, which is on the Microsoft website. If you're going to use Dev C++ in Allegro, Google Allegro Dev Pack. Download it, and double-click, and you're done. For anything else, you'll just have to Google it. It's not that hard, it's mainly copying files into the lib and the include folders in your IDE's directory. Here are some other handy tutorials available online for Allegro and SDL. When creating games, you should try to get used to using original or public domain resources, rather than, say, sprites and music ripped from another game. This way, there are no concerns with intellectual property infringement. On my site, there is a resources section that has a few public domain songs and sprites that you can use for any project, and you don't need to credit me. You can also find public domain resources by googling public domain graphics or sound. If you're up to making your own resources, here are some free tools you can use. Dr. Peter has created two useful sound apps. SFXR generates retro-sounding sound effects for you, and his Musagi tool is a music mixer, which also has a lot of retro-sounding samples. Another couple music creation tools I know of is Anvil Studio and Mario Paint Composer, though Mario Paint Composer doesn't really have a wide array of instruments. For spriting, you might try Graphic Scale. It's a shareware app made specifically for making animated sprites, and it's free to use. 
You might also try GIMP, which is more of a paint program than a spriting one, but I know people who sprite with it also. So that's it for the introduction. Next we'll be moving on to initializing our library. Make sure to check out the written version on the website, and make sure to ask any questions you have, whether you're stumped or just curious.